I'd say the present and future is looking bright for the Miami Hurricanes at the quarterback position. Luke Nickel is still out there throwing dimes. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, if there is such a thing. I am Alex Dono. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. Thank you to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're available free on YouTube and we're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. The recruiting overlord is going to be out with us on this episode. You know he's always brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. So we have the recruiting overlord with us, Brian Smith, uh, who's also my colleague at allhurricanes.com. Now, Brian, you're always traveling all over the southeast. You were in Atlanta for Pylon 7-on-7, which means you got another good look at Miami Hurricanes Class of 2025 committed quarterback Luke Nickel, who tore it up at uh, at 7-on-7 in Miami earlier, or I I guess last month that was. How did Luke Nickel perform in Atlanta this past weekend? He is the Mr. Consistency Trophy. Uh, His throwing motion, his accuracy, his decision-making, first and foremost, are all excellent. He plays for Cam Newton's team, and they're just – always tearing people up. Now he's got guys to throw to. Let's not kid ourselves. It's Cam's team, but he just doesn't force the ball. He puts it where it needs to go when it needs to go. And they just matriculate down the field Uh, mentally. And I've gotten to know Luke pretty well from talking to him at tournaments and whatnot. Mentally, he's about as straightforward and let's just win as it gets. He's a team first, not a me first guy. Really impressed with his overall demeanor and how he performs because he kind of carries himself like a 25 to 30 year old more than a 17-year-old, and that's unusual um, for any athlete, but it's also more important at quarterback. Let's be honest. There are certain positions you can't be the crazy guy, right? you know, and that just it just doesn't work. And for whatever reason, he's just taken to that role at a young age, and he obviously led Milton to a state title last year. They weren't the most talented team in Georgia, but he carried them in a lot of ways. I mean, he's still got some players, but they weren't the best team, and he kind of just shows that every time he plays. So, yeah, stock up for Luke Nickel. Yeah, and Luke is he's heading into his senior season at high school. And even prior to his junior season, he was committed to Miami. So Miami got in right. early with this one. But then it's also worth noting that, you know, he can't sign a national letter of intent yet. Uh, yeah. but the impressions that I've gotten from this young man, we've had him on the show before, is he's about as locked in as you can possibly oh, be yeah. without having signed the binding letter. So I, I take it you feel the same way, Brian, that it, it would take a lot for another school to pull nickel away from Miami at this point. The only way I could see that happening is if Dawson left and mm-hmm. I don't, I mean, anything's possible. If, you know, yeah. some power five school offers him a job, he's probably going to take it. But other than that, yeah, he, he really likes Shannon. That's his connection. And he gets along really well with Mario as well, which, Mario is pretty likable. I haven't talked to a recruit yet that didn't like the guy. So I think they're in good shape there. We we talked off the record about just going to Miami, visiting, and guys he's recruiting, players he's played with. He, he does not care really about the other programs coming after him. Now, when you saw uh, Nickel earlier this year at Battle Miami 7-on-7, seven seven, you know, you, you described it as like one of the best 7-on-7 seven seven performances you've ever seen by a quarterback. Well, was he that good again at Pylon? I don't know if I'll ever see quite what I saw at battle. He hit something like 15 or 16 of his last 17 throws or something towards the end, and they won the title. And that's our, for lack of a better term, the Super Bowl of seven-on-sevens because everybody in the country, for whatever reason, comes to that tournament in early January, and he was just on fire. But he was still good, and again, it was about consistency. Teams try to play soft because he's got Chris Henry, and he's got C.J. Wiley. He's got all these players, Ryan Mosley, major power five receivers. If you just play straight man against them, that's it doesn't work well. A couple of times when teams did run man, first play, he just went over the top and they scored. They, they have too much talent. So he took what they gave him, which again shows his mental capacity. Just be patient. Make sure you hit the right guy. Don't force it down the field. And they just are surgical on how they do it. It's a lot of fun to watch. 
We have a lot to get to on this episode of Locked on Canes. We're also going to talk about the uh, the ever-evolving but already pretty impressive-looking calendar of official visits for Miami this summer, starting the weekend of May 31st through June 2nd. Hurricanes are locking in some of the top players in the country for official visits. We're going to give you five takeaways from the first week of spring football. I want people to note Miami is on break this week. Spring break, the football players get spring break as well, so there won't be any spring practices this week. The next practice is going to be next Tuesday, the 19th, is when they return to the field. Uh, but this past week, Brian, Miami was loaded up with unofficial visitors. And one of those that I want to talk about here, who just visited Miami this past Friday for practice, he'd never been down here before, uh, and that is five-star defensive lineman Elijah Griffin out of Savannah, Georgia. Six foot five, 285, considered, of course, one of the very best in the country. That's why a five, he's a five star. He said, I just wanted to come see it for myself. He said this to 24 7 Sports to see what they're talking about with the development, seeing it in person at Miami, because you can't really see what's going on the practicing, the intensity, the coaching on FaceTime. I had to see it in person, he said. And uh, obviously Miami sounds like they made an impression on Elijah Griffin. This is a player from Savannah who has been crystal balled to Georgia before. What's going on with his recruitment, Brian? And what what could it take for Miami to pry him away? Well, Georgia has been on him like the rest of the free world since he's in eighth grade. Um, To put a backstop to it, like Savannah's got some players. But when he was in eighth grade, there were parents around the area that would not allow their child to play against him. They had to move him to upper level because he was already massive. Like, literally, like they were afraid that he was going to hurt them. Um, It is what it is. And he's been recruited by everybody since, like, ninth grade. He's had a bunch of offers. This is that guy. And he doesn't go to camps and all that stuff. He's already got all the offers, so he doesn't really care. So we don't get to talk to him. And this is kind of interesting that Miami got him on campus because I never know what he's doing. It is hardly anybody else does either. If they're going to get him, they're going to have to get his grandmother and his whole family down there. I don't know who all came, but like grandma is really important. They want him closer to home. That's Mm going to be Miami's thing. It's a long way from Savannah to Miami. Uh, UGA is probably three, four hours. I don't know what Miami is, but it's probably closer to 10, I'd imagine. So that's a long way. Yeah. Seven, eight, seven or something like that. But it's seven, eight hours. Yeah. It's a long way. I don't know what it is going to be because I haven't spoken to him yet. Um, mm-hmm. I'm curious to see if he comes back again. The, the first step, as I always say, if you don't get to get on campus for an unofficial, what are your odds really to get an official visit? They're pretty low. And even if you do, one visit doesn't do it because he's been to UGA several times. He's been to South Carolina, et cetera. That's probably going to be hard. So this was the first step. Miami's one of two or three schools that have a chance, but I mean, still Georgia's the likely landing spot, but they wouldn't have had any without this. So let's see if he sets an OB and let's see what happens from there. Well, I want to talk uh, about, uh, and Brian was out there practice with me last week. He took a lot of good photos and videos, top five takeaways from the first week of spring football, because there have been some surprises. I, I come into these things pretty optimistic. Certain areas exceeded my expectations. Other areas, maybe a little bit of a concern, but there still is another transfer portal window coming up. So guys, you want to keep it locked right here. We're talking Canes football. We're talking recruiting with the recruiting overlord, Brian Smith, on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. I am so thrilled that Fire TV is part of the Locked On family because I've been using this for years, guys, and I can't live without it because I need to be watching sporting events live, on demand, you name it, guys. Fire TV is your destination for sports, live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created the Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. And that includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. And we are also... 
proudly brought to you on this episode by our great friends at Game Time. This is the only ticket site I've been using since they've been a member of the Locked On family. And I love this, guys, because you get these amazing last-minute deals and flash deals. Buying last-minute tickets used to be stressful. It's no longer stressful thanks to the Game Time app. You can see the view from your seat before you buy. They give you all-in pricing, which means you're not going to be slapped with those hidden fees at checkout to try to, you know, bait and switch you. Nothing like that. And the game time guarantee, this is important, folks. That means you'll always get the best price on the game time app. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the game time app, create an account, and use code Locked On. For $20 off your first purchase. Guys, whether you're looking for sporting event tickets, concerts, comedy shows, get it all at game time. Create an account, redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much for making this Recruiting Overlord episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so Brian, after uh, going out to week one of spring football this past week, uh, I was hoping this would be the case, and my opinion was reinforced on this. My first takeaway is I think the quarterback position at Miami, it's in a lot better shape than it was last year from top to bottom, right? And that's not just the comparison of Cam Ward to Tyler Van Dyke. That goes all – Miami had three scholarship quarterbacks last year. They've got five right now. Poffenbarger, Jakari Brown is looking better than he did this time last year. Emery Williams, healthier than I thought he would be at this point coming off the broken arm. Judd Anderson is obviously someone for the future, but he's out there competing and doing well. So. Uh, I one thing I don't think we're going to be complaining about this season, Brian, especially with Cam Ward as the starter is quarterback. Yeah, I think it's pretty interesting that Miami went from the biggest question mark, obviously, towards the end of last year, quarterback. Now, Cam Ward's there. I, I think Poffenbarger is a really good quarterback. Watching him on last Monday, I'm like, OK, that's another good guy. And I thought Emory was the absolute most accurate of all of them. So name how many teams in the country have two, three starters that are accurate and then you got Jakari who's still developing who's got a gun and he made some really good throws too Miami might have the deepest room in the country you could at least put that in the conversation how you want to rate it is up to you but I was really really taken back by just how much talent they had in that room and that changes everything because they got a lot of receiver talent which we'll talk about too it's going to be fun to watch them yeah, Mario Cristobal mentioned on Friday that he's he's really happy with the way that the entire room is competing. Uh, you know, I like the fact that even though, you know, Cam, he knows he's going to be the starter unless something crazy happens, but he's still out there kind of playing with a chip on his shoulder trying to outdo the other guys. So he is embracing that competition despite the reputation that he comes in with. Uh, and, you know, Shannon Dawson mentioned something, Brian, on Monday that, uh, you know, to reinforce your point, Dawson can't remember any other time in his coaching career where he's had, you know, that many quarterbacks with experience who need to get reps in spring football because you're like, you're, you know, that, that, that's a lot of reps to go around between, you know, four guys with experience, obviously Judd probably getting a few less reps than the other guy being the, the early enrollee freshman, but Emery, Poffenbarger, Jakari, uh, Ward, they all need significant reps in practice. So he's, he's never had like a, a rotation that big and that deep in a spring football session before I was thinking about this the other day name another team that has four guys that have started college football games on their roster yeah. right now at quarterback and there might be but maybe like, oh, yeah. that is yeah. even for the transfer portal era yeah. that is pretty rare so they're going to be able to not only help one another but they'll be able to help receivers running backs everything from protections how the running game should work all of that is going to benefit the Miami Hurricanes so yeah, they're going to be able to utilize it, and it'll be kind of interesting to see at the end of spring. I know Mario won't announce much as far as depth charts, but we'll be able to tell. One of those guys has to be four string, just mathematically. Right. It's just that that's <laughs> fact. And, you know, they always worry about putting out depth charts because guys leave. Well, Somebody's there's going to be there's going to be a lot of oars on the depth chart. Like like starter oh, is going to yeah, say yeah, first yeah. team Cam Ward, second team is going to be Jakari Brown, or Emery or Poffenbarger. So they're going to keep a lot of oars yeah. on there to keep these guys happy. Well, I, I don't know how much that'll work. I mean, it, we'll see. But, yeah. I mean, if they can keep all four of those after spring, good for them. That's going to be yeah. quite a task. Yeah. 
But obviously that is your objective. If you have depth at quarterback, you have a much better chance to win in September. You know, my, my second takeaway is for uh, a position that was very disappointing on the field last year. Like I know, you know, they blocked and all that, but uh, I think the entire tight end room at Miami had 30 targets all season long in the passing game last season, which is just unfathomable for a place we used to call tight end you. But uh, I expect a lot more from the tight ends this season, Brian. And of course, you can say this for any position, but the, the caveat here is certain guys have to stay healthy who didn't last year. But so far, Elijah Arroyo has been, you know, my, Miami's overall top tight end in practice. He looks as healthy as he's been in the last two oh, yeah. years. He can be a receiving threat when healthy. Um, the Riley Williams development, Brian, is interesting. Mario Cristobal said on Friday that Riley Williams is up to 260 pounds. You know, at, at oh, really? six foot, he's looking, he's looking strong out there and he's got, you know, played basketball as well growing up. He's got very good hands. He's making some plays. So I, I think I expect even more from Riley Williams this year. And then Elijah Lofton is a wild <laughs> card, Brian, because he looks like he can get on the field this year because that young man can do a little bit of everything. This is a package situation and Miami did not run what Alex Mirabal, Mario Cristobal, Dawson, and all them really wanted to last year because they didn't have a Royal. That's one. And they didn't have enough depth, period. Yeah, a guy like Jackson Carver would play at a lot of places early. He's now in a situation he's in a log jam. They've got guys. Uh, Riley, as you noted, he made a one-handed catch last week when I was at practice. I was like, holy cow. So he has very special hands. They have players. Now, those packages – you can put Riley out wide. You could put Cam McCormick at H back. You could put Lofton at H back. You can go to with one running back, two tight end sets that still have pass receivers at, at tight end. Last year, that wasn't the case. When they ran 12 personnel last year, they were probably running the football. And when mm -hmm. you give it away, it's not very easy. So having Cam Ward behind center and being able to use more packages, you can put Lofton in the slot if you wanted. You could put Arroyo in the slot. You could do all kinds of things, and they will be very, very difficult to defend. Every time we have access to Shannon Dawson, the OC, I always ask him about the tight ends. And he even, uh, at the end of his answer, he even said, hopefully you guys this year are not asking me about using the tight ends more. So he he knows, he knows those questions. Sure. You know, they happen a lot last year. He thinks that group is going to get utilized a lot more. Uh, third takeaway for me, Brian, and, you know, admittedly, I didn't get to watch this group as much as I would like to, but I did watch them more closely the second day than I did the first uh, linebacker is intriguing to me. Now, Kiko is not practicing in the spring. Maui Noah had his shoulder cleaned up. Uh, if, if there's anybody who can af afford to miss the spring, it, it's him. He'll be fine. He's going to be Miami's best linebacker. So uh, Wes Besaint is looking good in the reps that he's gotten. And someone who's been the talk of spring so far is our guy Popo. Uh, Popo Aguirre has, uh, I think he's really stepping up. And he mentioned to you and me at that autograph signing a couple of weeks ago that things really slowed down for him and he's a lot more comfortable. So uh, I think we could be pleasantly surprised by some of the young linebackers, hopefully Bobby Washington and uh, and Malik Bryant as well, and then Marcellus Pulliam and Adarius Hayes looks big out there. I think we could be pleasantly surprised by the linebackers. This is the spot they didn't have answers for if, if somebody would have went down early in the year last season. Miami was pretty fortunate to be truthful here, Alex, it could have went sideways. Obviously, Maui Noah had seven and a half sacks, et cetera. He was one of the best linebackers in the country. That worked out well. Yeah. Um, they also had some developmental guys kind of coming along, but now after an offseason, et cetera, like you said, Popo mentioned he could play either spot. He doesn't care whether it's Will or Mike. That's important. They have flexibility, and he looks the part. He's 232 pounds, something like that. Those kind of players coming off the bench means Miami has better players than most of the teams are playing because he would start at most schools. Walking by Popo, that's not a normal human being. Like, he's put together. And he's a smart kid, too. He enjoys all the intangibles of learning the playbook. And if you can get guys like that just rotating in, playing like 15, 20 snaps, man, that's an advantage. Uh, depth wins games, man. Especially you get to November, you're playing teams like Florida State and, and you know, big rivalry games, ACC title game, et cetera. You need depth. Miami's finally getting there. Yeah, and, and they need it. They need guys like like Popo and, and Pulliam and Bryant and everybody to step up this year because even though like Kiko is back, like you said, which is huge because he was arguably the best player on the team last year, but you did lose Corey Flagg and, and KJ Cloyd, who were important players last year. So some of these guys need to step up. Uh, you know, my fourth takeaway, I probably could have let off with this, Brian, because it was the talk of last week. 
receivers are out there making okay. eye-popping plays. Now, it, it helps that Cam Ward ha had an excellent week of practice throwing to these guys, but still, that catch that Xavier Restrepo made on Wednesday, the one-handed grab while he was getting interfered with, I mean, that was, you know, not everybody's making that catch. 99% of the players in the country are probably not making the catch the way that he did. JoJo Trader had some big catches. You know, not a receiver, but you mentioned Riley Williams having the one-handed grab. I saw Nykar make some nice catches last week. You know, obviously some of the other usual suspects, Isaiah Horton, Jacoby George. So uh, I'm, I'm feeling very good about the early trends with the chemistry between Cam Ward and his receivers. It's only spring, but I feel very positive so far. Yeah, I think the receiver group overall, just being able to rotate that many guys and have competition is beneficial, which it should be. But I didn't know, even though I have a lot of confidence in, in some of these guys, like younger players like Nykar, I've seen live, really excited about him, and I've seen JoJo numerous times. You don't know how freshmen will adapt, Alex. I mean, we both know we're freshmen sometimes that right. come in and they're overwhelmed. Neither one of them are, and neither one of them are slow either. Uh, watching them live, they can really run. This is going to be a very unique competition, and which spots do they play? Because I think both of them could play slot or outside. You know, they just have speed, and they have the ability to make plays in space, and they're like second 13. You know, like Isaiah Hortons, nobody's talking about him. I thought he looked really good I, I when I was it. on Monday, and he, I think, will be the outside boundary receiver. He certainly fits the role in terms of a body type, and they have a lot of guys rotating in and out. So, again, more depth, more experience, more familiarity. And you have Cam Ward throwing the ball. Uh, all those things are positives for the Hurricanes. Yeah, and then one that's uh, more of a question mark. Uh, you know, for my my fifth takeaway, I think defensive back is a work in progress. Um, I, I don't think it's completely fair to judge that group based on the first week of spring because you had some important corners who aren't practicing yet. Uh, Damari Brown, Robert Stafford, I didn't see out there last year so the cornerback room looked especially thin uh the safety yeah. room you got big shoes to fill with cam kitchens and james williams no longer there uh, i thought mish powell and savion riley had a good week of practice overall mario cristobal said on friday that this is a really important period for jaden harris to step up i thought jaden did pretty well as the cam kitchens understudy uh last season but still i mean uh i would say and defensive back i will note on their behalf wednesday uh, the receivers made a lot of big plays in the one-on-ones on Wednesdays. I, I thought the uh, the defensive backs bounced back pretty well on Friday and held their own and made some more plays. So I think we're seeing a nice competition between the receivers and DBs, and that's a good receiver group to train against. Yeah, when, when you don't have guys like Damari out there, you're not going to get the 100% litmus test. I mean, I think Damari is a future NFL player. He wasn't in practice when I was there, and that's just part of it. Guys go – out for whatever reason, come back into the lineup. They, they want to keep him healthy in spring as much as they can. I want to see him in September far more than I do in March. So I'm cool with that. But at the same time, we didn't get exactly what we wanted to see when we watched all of it. Now, with that being stated, here's an opportunity for some other younger guys to get chances too and other players that you may not hear about. So that's what spring ball is about. There's always one or two guys at the end of spring. You're like, we didn't talk about this guy at all. And then at the end, there he is. He's on too deep and he's competing. So maybe it'll be one of the defensive backs for the Canes. Uh, when we come back, we got to talk about this official visit calendar. Uh, and by the way, Brian has been all over it. If you go to allhurricanes.com right there on the front page right now, you will see the official visits that have been made official so far, if that makes any sense. Uh, and there are obviously others that will get locked in between now and the summer, but Miami's going to have some of the best prospects in the country right. visiting throughout the summer. So, folks, we will talk about that when we come back. You know what you want to do? You want to keep it locked right here as we are only getting started on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. I'm only getting started with LinkedIn Jobs. And LinkedIn, they're nice enough to sponsor these recruiting segments. Every time we get Big Brian on, we break it down. And when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anyplace else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. 
LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. You have 2.5 million small businesses using LinkedIn jobs for hiring. Make yours the next. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. Hey, for the everydayers, if you want to take that everyday or experience to the next level, sign up and try it free for two weeks. Our exclusive Locked on Canes Insiders chat. I include the link in the show description below. When you become a Locked on Canes Insider, you get text messages directly from my phone to yours and vice versa. One-on-one questions and answers, recruiting scoops, spring practice updates. Try it free for 14 days. Click that link below. Become a Locked on Canes Insider. Then if you like it, you can opt in after two weeks for $4.99 a month. We give you a lot of added value on there. Uh, And by the way, allhurricanes.com, make sure you check out uh, the website, especially today, because Brian, uh, let's take a look at that uh, first official visit weekend, uh, which starts May 31st. TJ Alford, who did come for an unofficial last week, the linebacker out of Vero Beach, is going to be here for an official. Marion Dye, defensive end uh, out of Elkhart, Indiana. Lamar Williams, who's already committed to Miami, the offensive lineman out of Tallahassee, but as we always say, Brian, uh, it's not just about recruiting. It's about keeping your crew. You, you never stop. Even the guys are verbally committed to you. And that's a nice weekend. And again, more names could be added to this list. But certainly a guy like TJ Alford is one that I look at and say, I hope Miami can gain some ground there. That's a player that I have heard every rumor about possible on where he's going to go. So Florida, Florida State, Miami, Ohio State, et cetera, UCF, yeah. everybody's after him. And being from where he's at, Vero is a good program, but it's at the end of Highway 60. Been there many times. I don't know. Uh, I, I've given up figuring it out, but getting him back on campus was important, and they've got an OV set. Uh, this will be a very long recruitment for Tarvos, uh, TJ. He's he's a really good player, and everybody wants him. Miami's in the mix, and this is a yet another class. They're going to really try to get some linebackers every other year. You know, you want to load up on a spot. This is one of their prime targets. Uh, we'll see where he goes. That That's a great one. Uh, the die kid is really intriguing. He's from Elkhart, Northern Indiana, not a normal place. He's a freaky athlete though. Six, four, six, five kid. That's an edge rusher fits the profile kind of like Marquise Whitefoot last year. Mm-hmm. And then of course, Williams is an offensive tackle that they prioritize early in the process and they really like, and he's already committed. So good start for the Canes. Let's take a look kind of together with the June 7th and June 14 weekend. So June 7th, Adonis Curry, who's a cornerback out of Lancaster, California. He's going to be here. Cortez Smith, who's an interior offensive lineman out of Lilburn, Georgia. Then June 14th, it's going to be a busy weekend. Myron Charles, who I love, defensive tackle out of Port Charlotte. Chris Ewald, who has recently been projected to Miami in an RPM prediction on on three. Chris Ewald from Chaminade, great player. Uh, Joshua Moore, who's a wide receiver out of West Broward. DJ Pickett, who's my favorite player in this entire cycle. Uh, The defensive back out of Zephyr Hills High School. Zayden Walker, who's a linebacker out of Ellaville, Georgia. Another excellent player. Uh, Who are some of the standouts, Brian, for those June 7th and June 14 weekends for you? (laughs) How many do you want to pick? Um, This is uh, an elite group. Uh, These two weekends really are. All all of those kids can more or less pick their school. Um, There isn't one that's not. Adonis Curry I'm most curious about because he's a California kid. I don't know anything about him, but I've just watched his film, and he's a really long corner. Don't have much insight onto him because I haven't met him yet. Uh, Cortez Smith, his recruitment's about as contested as it gets, being from where he's from, uh, Gwinnett County, just outside Atlanta, Georgia, Tennessee, all the normal programs involved. I was with Myron Charles actually yesterday uh, in Atlanta. He was at the five-on-five competition. He's a really big defensive tackle that a lot of people want. He'll probably stay in state. He doesn't like cold weather. He was shivering yesterday in Atlanta. I'm like, yeah, you're staying down. So I was making fun of him, telling him that I thought he was going to commit to Minnesota. I won't repeat what he said to that. <laughs> but uh, Chris Ewald, in my opinion, is the most important corner on the board because he's a South Florida kid. They have to start getting the elite South Florida corners. Miami has missed on them for pretty much the better part of a decade. And this is a key player, Auburn and Georgia and all these programs are coming after him. Really important. Joshua Moore is one of the freakier athletes in the country. He's a wide receiver, West Broward kid. And then, of course, Pickett, 
if you need any information about Pickett, you haven't watched this show much because we right. certainly talk about him. Uh, might be the best player in the country, 6'4 corner. He's rare as it gets. And then Zayden Walker, many people have as the number one linebacker in the country out of Georgia. A lot of people think UGA is the team there, but Miami's right there as well. And then uh, June June twenty first is going to be crazy. Uh, a lot of oh, top yeah. players. Yeah, I mean Ben it's... Ben Hanks Ben Hanks Jr. cornerback from Booker T, who's a, a Florida legacy, but he's been trending somewhat nicely to Miami. Uh, Alvin Henderson, who's a running back that we really love out of Alabama. So you you figure who Miami's battling for him. Uh, Nathaniel Marshall, who's a defensive lineman out of Chicago. Miami's done well with defensive linemen out of Chicago recently. <laughs> Elijah true. Melendez, who is uh, he's committed to Miami, but a lot of other schools are after him. Linebacker out of Kissimmee. Cortez Mills, who's another one of my favorites in this class, the receiver out of Homestead. Luke Nickel, who we've talked about, who's the quarterback who's already committed to Miami. Isaac Sowles Jr., who's an interior offensive lineman out of uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Herbert Scroggins, defensive end uh, out of uh, Savannah, Georgia. Drake Stubbs, safety out of Jacksonville. And then there's there, there's a few other players who are, have not locked in their dates yet. But this is this is just a who's who, Brian. June 21st is going to be wild. Yeah, if you want to pick the best player from that group, more power to you. Um, it, it's pretty, pretty intriguing. But the first thing I want to note here, Miami goes after the best players wherever they are. Obviously, yeah. you want to get as many South Florida kids as you can, but there's a fine line there. Like Alvin Henderson had 61 touchdowns last year at his high school in Alabama. He can go wherever he wants. Yeah, yeah Miami would like to have him on the roster. You know what I mean? It, you know, Nathaniel Marshall is a kid I heard about when he was a sophomore in Chicago. Yeah, Miami would love to have him on the roster. But you still have Cortez Mills right down the road in Homestead. He is a priority. He was dominant in Miami's Under Armour. You got Luke Nickel coming in. You got Herbert Scroggins, who I saw live last year from Savannah. That is a dude that could play outside linebacker, edge, whatever. He's just a really good football player. And then Stubbs is as good a safety as there is in the country from Jacksonville. Miami's really spreading it around trying to get the best kids on campus. I love it. And, of course, uh, we'll be talking a lot. And there are going to be more unofficials, of course, happening throughout spring football. When we get closer to those OVs, Brian Smith is going to be our guy to break all that down. Make sure you check out his work at allhurricanes.com. Make sure you check him out all over the Locked On Network, talking recruiting, and follow him on X at FBScout underscore Florida. Make sure you follow us as well. If you follow us at Locked On Canes, we will follow you back. Brian, thank you so much, sir, and enjoy the rest of your week coming up. Thank you very much. We'll talk to everyone again next time. Oh, by the way, we'll talk to everyone later tonight because I'm going to be talking with Jalen Hollywood Bell. We will be talking with a four-star corner who just took an unofficial visit to Miami this past week. I want to check out with Mr. Hollywood and see how he enjoyed that Miami visit, break down his recruitment a little bit. He officially got his Miami offer during his visit on Friday. So we'll talk to you guys again later tonight on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day.